Hi there, welcome along to another workout for you to row along to. It's the 500 meter plan week one, session three, and today is a bottom tier workout. Now, what we're gonna do is a very simple 30 minutes at 20 strokes per minute at 2K plus 18. Or if like me, you're gonna be training on a heart rate zone area, then we're gonna stick with that. So I'm gonna carry on doing the Maffetone thing, which is basically 180 minus my age. So I'm gonna be aiming for 135 beats per minute for my heart, and I don't want to go above that. So if my heart starts to go above 135, I will slow down. But I'm gonna use the 2K plus 18 as the ballpark, and then I'll attenuate depending on where I am for my heart rate, okay? So you can follow along if you might even just want to choose a, rate, a range between 65 and 75% of your maximum heart rate if you don't quite agree with the idea of the cookie cutter 180 minus your age. Which I still think is a bit strange, but hey, and this is it, they both work out the same for me, so I might as well just uh, carry on talking about Maffetone. So, right, long intro. Let's get into our four minute warm up. Now, set your drag factor first. If you don't know about drag factor, please check out the video on my YouTube channel. Next up, set your monitor to eye height so you don't have to look up and don't have to look down. And finally, the foot strap so they cover the bottom lace of your shoe, or if you're in socks like me, they'll let you hinge comfortably forwards at the front. Now, eagle-eyed viewers will notice that I now have my iPhone on top of the monitor. Now, that's thrown off my whole have the monitor eye height thing, but hey, whatever. So, four minutes, starting at around about 18 strokes per minute, in three, two, one, go. So, don't worry too much about your pace here. Just row. I've had a, another busy day at the desk. Body's just waking up to the concept of me doing some exercise. So I just want to get the heart rate up and the body warm. I mean, it's not going to be that tough a session today. 30 minutes at 20 strokes per minute, but I still want to make sure I'm warm and I don't set off cold and then I'm kind of lost a little bit with this heart rate training. So make sure and still drive out with the legs. Nice straight arms at the front. And just worry about that for the time being. Because to be honest, if you can just think about legs and arms, and maybe your posture, then most of the rowing stroke takes care of itself. Everything else is then just tweaks to make you more efficient or faster. So just lean forwards at the front to run about one o'clock position and then back to an 11 o'clock position. That's all you have to do. Drive out with the legs, straight arms, rowing simple. Okay, so in about 15 seconds, we'll take one foot out of the foot straps. So three more strokes. One more stroke. There we go, one foot out, stick it on the floor, and then carry on rowing and just rock from the ball of your foot that's on the ground to your heel just to let you continue to get good compression at the front and so you don't have to really change your technique much just because you're rowing with one leg okay one more stroke I swap feet like I always say so much easier for me because I row in socks I can just slip my feet in and out of the straps. It's not for everyone, rowing in socks. A lot of people find they bruise the bottom of their heel the first few times and then never really come back to it again. But I think it's worth it. Right, both feet in and then let's have straight legs and just use our body and our arms slight bend to those legs just to make sure they're not your knees aren't locked but really hardly well hopefully zero power is coming from your legs it's all just coming from your back 
rocking backwards and then your arms pulling in then arms out body rocks forwards two more of these one more and then let's slide to the front with straight arms and drive out with the legs don't have to worry about going too far this is all just about the connection at the front hitting that flywheel so you can even take really short just rock in and out and just try and get a feel for that connection at the front with your straight arms it's a very useful drill just kind of you start to really get that feeling for the biting point when you just pick up the flywheel so anyway so that's the warm-up done continue moving up and down the rail have a quick drink and i will once again tell you what we're doing today Okay then, so today's session is the most exciting rowing session ever made. It's one that will set your dreams on fire. No, it's not. It's 30 minutes at 20 strokes per minute. But these are, I mean, exceptionally important. I mean, I'll, I'll rant about this during the row, but do not underestimate the value of this row. Okay, this is more important than yesterday's as an all-round rowing extravaganza for you, okay? Pace-wise, if you're just going on a 2K pace, then do this at 2K plus 18. But if you're going to do it on a heart rate, trying to keep on the low end of things like me for the Maffetone thing, then you don't want it to go above, certainly not above 75%. Um, hopefully, you're going to keep it between 65 and 75, so 70%. And for me, I'm using the Maffetone calculation, which is 180 minus my age. So I don't want it to go above 135, or if it does, I'll ease off a little bit. Okay? So... Again, I might as well just talk to all you to talk to you about this stuff while we're going through the row rather than top loading it here. So 30 minutes, 20 strokes a minute, either heart rate cap or 2k plus 18. In three, two, one, go. Okay, so the trick here, if you're doing heart rate based training, is to make sure you get your heart rate up. So I don't want you to start off sprinting in order to get your heart rate up to the figure you want. But at the same time, if you're finding that you're like three minutes into this and you're still 30 beats a minute under where you should be, then maybe increase your pace a little bit. Hold that for a couple of minutes and see whether that was enough to get you up to your heart rate and then you can back off again I mean I'm trying to keep this at my 2k plus 18 for the time being which is 203 for me and then I'm already at 130 so, if things don't settle down, I'll have to back off a little bit. But then, it's a good time to just have a think about technique. Make sure it's not poor technique. Making my heart rate, heart rate spike artificially. Right, so I'm at 135. Increasing a little bit, so... I'm just going to back down pace to, I'm now at 2k plus 21. I'll hold this for a while as it seems to have dropped my heart rate a tiny bit. So the point of this, and I'm going to always go through this little mini lecture when we get to these rows is the point of these bottom tier ones is to build your core fitness okay to make sure you have the fitness to hold your 500 meter pace and not just have to stop because you're completely blown up but you've still got all the power left in your muscles. So this 
cardio training part is absolutely vital. I mean, look at car engines. You have to build the base engine first and then you put all the bells and whistles through it in terms of injectors and boring out engine sizes and things, but you still need a good engine to start with. Probably not the best of analogies, but hopefully you follow me. So what I'm saying is that it may seem counterintuitive to do this kind of a training session when your goal is to get faster it's something that you'll probably only be rowing between a minute and a half and say two and a half minutes depending on how fast you are or under so you might be saying why am I doing a long slow 30 minutes when the race is all about speed and power well not only do you need to remember we do have speed and power sessions twice a week on this plan but they do take it out of you and so a row like this keeps you moving, keeps you building fitness while you recover from the day before. And frankly, if you didn't wake up the next day after doing session two and feel it in your legs or arms or whatever, then, well, either you're a lot fitter and stronger than me or you weren't pushing it hard enough. But you should really feel that this is a welcome session after the fun of session two. But most importantly, it's just get being able to get that engine inside your body purring along. Because if you think about the best sports cars, top end sports cars, they're not built purely for speed. They're also built to be able to last and just go for a drive for a few thousand miles at the proper speed limit. And then it's only when you need to that you can floor it and go faster than everyone else. Anyway, listen, I've spent, what, six minutes talking about the importance of these sessions. I'm sure it won't be my last time, but all I'm saying is don't gloss over the importance of these sessions. Don't skip them. Don't push them too hard because you don't want to end up in the mid training zone where you're not getting the fitness and fat burn benefits of rowing it nice and slow like me but you're also not getting the high end power and speed benefits of rowing the top tier stuff so and there's no need for the mid-tier intervals in the 500 meter plan because they're all about tolerance of tempo of being able to hold a pace for duration when you're going to be on the machine for just a couple of minutes you don't have to worry about that you just need to worry about fitness which we're doing today and then power and speed which we do for two of the other sessions every week I'm drifting a bit I've been holding 
207 during most of that chat, yet my heart rate sitting stubbornly at 139. So I'll just ease off a tiny bit more. And I mean, listen, my ego, when I'm currently seeing 207, 208 on the monitor, my ego is saying, don't let people see this. Don't upload this one. Don't let people see you rowing with anything with a two at the front. But my ego can be quiet for five weeks while I go through this 500 meters training plan ready for the races. And hopefully, if nothing else, by the end of it, I'll approve to you how effective it is. I've already set my baseline of 100 and, sorry, one minute, 32.2. And then in two and a bit weeks, it's time for the Scottish champs which I'd hope I'd be slightly faster than that. And then two weeks after that is the British champs, which again, I'll hope I'd be faster. I'm not gonna win anything. I've been too long away from training at pace to even consider scaring the podium, but as far as proving the concept of this training plan to you, hopefully it'll be starkly apparent how effective just having these bottom tier and top tier workouts are for a 500 meters race. Now, I do supplement the rowing with some weight training now it's not too heavy from a weights point of view everything's really in the kind of 10 to 14 rep range so pick a weight i can do pretty much 12 times but without hitting absolute fatigue when I get to that 12th rep then I do that three times with a minute and a half rest in between and then split everything up into four days worth of weight training first one is all about the chest and pushing motions so like bench presses pec flies uh, and then tricep stuff. So tricep push downs, dips, press ups. So basically just do eight of these workouts, or sorry, these um, sets, lifts, whatever you want to call them, that are either push or tricep. And the next day, I move on to legs and this is about quads mostly so lunges and leg extensions and squats all only 12 reps so I'm pretty much 90% of maximum I guess if I'm still able to I don't have to stop at 12 sure after the third set it might be a bit much, but. And day three is pulling motions. So that's kind of single arm rows, seated rows, face pulls, lat pull downs. But then also bicep exercises as well 
because you're pulling the weight up. And then on the fourth day, it's mostly about hamstrings, back, and shoulders. So deadlifts, shoulder presses, stuff like that. But like I say, mostly because I'm trying to hit my lightweight status, which I've only got half a kilogram to go on, which is nice. I'm not really doing building exercises. So everything's more about mobility and kind of increasing the sensation of power rather than it being about building more muscle fibers. Well, hang on, I've completely blown my heart rate. I'm up at 78%. Back off. So I've shot through my five beats a minute limit because I was too busy talking to you about weight training. I mean, I don't expect you to do it too, but I want to be fully transparent about the things that I'm doing for this 500 meter plan so you don't think, hang on, he's only fast because he was spending all day powerlifting and stuff. I'm not. If I'm lucky, I get a row like this at lunchtime and then when the kids are in bed, I'll do like an hour of weights, which includes a minute and a half rest between every set. So when I say an hour and a half, it's probably only like 25 minutes of, of actual lifting in that hour. But I don't wanna, don't wanna raise my heart rate too much on the weights because basically I don't want to drain my energy system like get all the glycogen out of my legs and stuff I don't want to do that I want to keep my energy for the rows and then I'll not is this the right way to put it? yeah I'll not run out of energy when it comes to doing the weights at night Whereas if I was doing an energy depletion row and then an energy depre depletion weights by not taking rest periods and having a high heart rate, I'd just be tired all the time. So, if you're thinking of trying to follow me as closely as possible, that's what I'm doing. Let me know if you are and I'll do something about all the actual routines I'm doing. It is more all over body. Partly because the more kind of muscle tone I can add, not beef muscle, but tone muscle, the more calories I burn. And so hopefully the more likely I'm going to be down at 75 kilograms by the time these races happen. Yeah, there's also an element of vanity, of course. It's quite nice seeing defined muscles instead of muscles hidden in a layer of lockdown fat. But yeah, and then the last thing to say about the weights is how to kind of populate them on days when you're also rowing. Now, one week I will do leg day and match it up with a bottom tier like this. But then the next week I will match leg day with one of the top tier sessions just so that I can surf the wave of when the weights are kind of taking me to complete hypertrophy 
which is when I do it on the top tier days and then the days that they can kind of cap off a good day's base training like today Ah, oh, come on still trying to keep track of my heart rate here 138 right now but I've had to slow right down to 209 to make it happen if you're in a similar position as me the important part is if you have to ease off don't ease off your stroke rate keep your stroke rate the same just put less of a oomph into your leg drive to kind of ease off the power a bit which I need to do because I'm still up at 75% of my heart rate or my max heart rate so try not to let your technique all fall to bits just because you're going slower just because you're driving softer with the legs it might feel a little weird but actually if you can develop the control to hold the right technique no matter how much power you're sticking into the machine that's going to help you on the way up when you're up at like 35 to 40 strokes a minute flailing up and down the rail but if you've ground in something close to the right technique then your body should still be wanting to do that even at the higher stroke rates ah oh, come on still 75 and back off even more I do know that especially for this kind of training the blowing of my heart rate is because I've been talking to you the whole time this session usually I can hold run about 207 and it keeps my heart rate where it should be but because just literally through talking I'm getting less oxygen in and the carbon monoxide is remaining in my system for longer as I hold my breath to talk to you that's why my heart rate's going up that's alright easing off a little bit here and then at 136 so that's the point is you really want to find your sweet spot heart rate but give yourself five beats either way as a kind of a working margin so if I end up at 137 I don't panic I just ease off a little bit until my heart rate goes down to 135 because you don't really want panic to make your heart rate spike so there we go just easing along like I say this is helping grind in the right technique as well as develop your fitness so let's just spend the last eight minutes doing a sit rep of technique okay that's a good idea let's start with our shins we hardly ever start with shins you want to slide the seat forward enough that your shins are pointing vertically not too far past please and hopefully at least close to vertical if you're unsure and you want some feedback tips on how you can get a sensation for getting it right when you're rowing on your own check out the rowing technique hacks video that I have on YouTube which shows you what to do with a post-it note to get this right 
but yeah so shins to vertical and then sitting on your sit bones at the front rather than with your hips tucked under we don't want that please so up on your sit bones and then a slight forward lean to the one o'clock position and that should mean that your shoulders are past your hips because you've got that lean forwards and you're up on your sit bones and then your shins are vertical now as long as all of those bits are correct don't worry at all if you have to lift your heels yes perfect flexibility would mean you can get into that position at the front with vertical shins and not raise your heels but I figure how much do I raise? maybe about an inch hard to tell I don't think that creates a problem as long as you slam those heels down as you engage your legs so really start with your heels pressing into the foot plate and hopefully that will reduce the chances of a butt scoot or your back flicking backwards too early uh, come on heart so we are 25 minutes in it's fair enough that we're a little high and back up at 75 again just ease off a bit but what else so you've got your forward lean shins at vertical up in your sit bones good posture with your back imagine you're sitting on a carrot and you don't want to snap it so nice and powerful but not like boat you're not like a slab of wood you're powerful rather than bolt upright and your arms as you come to the front nice and straight you might even want to do a little external rotation of your elbows point them down slightly which will help engage your lats but most importantly you want relaxed shoulders and relaxed arms fingers nice and relaxed and loose as acting as hooks over the handle thumbs underneath and then your thumbs are to just lightly touch your index finger okay so you're not gripping for dear life on the handle everything's relaxed and then with all that powerful posture and relaxed arms and shins at vertical it finally comes time to drive back with the legs plant those heels down and push the machine away from you just push it away into next next door really visualize pushing it away from you it does make a difference to visualize that rather than just thinking push then hold that forward lean as you're doing the drive with your legs at least until halfway through the leg drive and then at that point that's when you swing through your hips so you bend or swing over your hips rather than just crumpling your lower back it's a proper powerful swing so basically your posture remains the same it's just at the front of the machine you're into one o'clock and the back of the machine you're at eleven o'clock 
And then as your leg drive finishes and your back is swung back, you pull the arms in, squeeze your shoulder blades tight, send your elbows through your sides, and that's the finish with the arms. Once that's done, push your arms straight back out at the same speed you brought them in at. So, in, out. And then that arm movement engages your forward lean through the hips. Then once your arms are past your knees and you're already leaning forwards, that's the point when you bend your knees and go rolling to the front of the machine, ready to start again. Now, the main thing is to let that momentum take care of you going forwards. So, when you get to the back of the stroke, don't flick with your feet to pull yourself forwards. You don't need to. And what that does is it promotes that kind of tucked under hips thing because you're pulling yourself forwards. If you can keep your posture and just use your arm recovery from that hip rock, you don't need the straps at all. Because you can just take your feet out of the straps, carry on rowing, and you don't go flying off the back of the machine if you're doing the right sequencing of leg drive finished before your arms pull in and then arms away and back rock to send you forwards again. So you don't need your straps at 20 strokes a minute. You probably do once you get above 26, but hey, one more stroke. Whew. All right. So, I mean, I ended up still at 75% of my heart. I did, did kind of, I was trying to be a good boy today. I didn't manage it. But at least I did say between 65 and 75. So at least I didn't completely blow it. But in terms of trying to be patient and stuff, bad John. Anyway, so let's talk more during a two minute cool down. Are you ready? Let's go in. Oh, hang on, get your feet in the straps first. Let's not start the countdown. Three, two, one, go. So, I think that wasn't that tough a row. This is really just about just easing yourself off after a half hour's worth of effort and just making sure everything kind of glides into neutral rather than it being needing to help your heart rate come down and stuff. It's only two minutes. But make sure you're happily cooled down by the end. Remember, I tend to waffle for another 30 seconds anyway, so you can continue cooling down during that. So there we go. So session three, week one of the 500 meter plan was a fun bottom tier workout. Well, I say fun. I mean, I was able to get a lot of information across about the weight training and stuff, but... I'm sure you probably, I mean, listen, session two was a lot more enjoyable in that really felt like I was building something from that, that, hey, this is all about the 500 meter. It is hard to look at a session like this and think it's going to help. But please trust me, this session is just as important as the top tier power and speed sessions. Anyway, session four is back to the fast stuff. So session four is slightly more about power than it is about lung busting, high intensity Tabata stuff that we had in session two. But it's still gonna leave you with jelly legged and, and you are gonna be tired. So look forward to that one. And then of course session five will be another bottom tier to cap off week one. Ooh. It's been a fun first start to this actually. Feels great. I hope you do too. So that's my two minute cool down finished. Uh, make sure and uh, click like or subscribe or whatever to 
whether this is the YouTube video or the, uh, the podcast version. It's always great to hear from people and, and if nothing else, it means that I know I'm not wasting my time if I, when I see some kind of numbers on there and some kind of response. Because, hey, I do this mostly to rehab myself and it just so happens that you folks are here as well. But also knowing that you guys watch and listen is what kind of keeps me hitting record and, and making these. So I'm sure I'd just be rowing on my own with dead mice blaring out at full volume if it wasn't for making these videos for you. So hell, the neighbours are very thankful <laughs> of you. So anyway, thanks again for being part of this. All that's really left, left to say is that tonight's dinner is going to be chicken fajitas, which is always nice. And the hashtag for today uh, is trust the plan. So hashtag trust the plan. I don't know if I've done that one before, but I think because we're it's two bottom tiers into this first week, and there's still another one to come at the end of the week. I just want to make sure that people actually trust that this is exceptionally important. Read up on this if you don't believe the wee Scotsman, because uh, you'll find that everybody says that this is an absolutely vital session to do. Okay, thanks very much. Be well, stay safe, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.